Hey guys, it's going to be again and welcome back to my channel. So thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. So today I'm pretty excited because I've been prototyping a new way to actually create a screenshot in real time and then pass that screenshot to the image tracker so that we can do real-time image tracking and real-time screen capture of images while we're using AR Foundation and AR Kit. So what I'm going to be showing you today is what I did, what I had to you know, code in order to make that a, a possibility. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to jump into Unity, show you the code, and then at the end of the video, you should have enough information to implement it as you know, implement it yourself. Thank you guys. All right, guys, so let me show you what I did to implement real-time screen capture and image tracking. So what I'm going to show you is a demo of what I built. I think I want to start with that so you can see what to expect from this video. So this one is demo one. I'm basically taking a, an, an area, a screen capture of the area, which in this case is the character. In this one, I take a screen capture in real time. And as I'm taking it, I'm pressing the capture. I actually have a good that I created and put on the on the actual button. That was my mistake, but I actually I actually like that. I'm gonna be moving that down so that we don't see it in there. But that's kind of a, one of the first examples. And the other example that I have is I also did the same thing, but I'm I'm using you know a different book for my kid, and I can rotate it. I'm taking a, another screenshot of of these uh, of this other thing. And then lastly, I'm also doing this, and and this is all happening in real time. So I think I'm taking a screenshot. I'm saving the screenshot to the disk and then loading the screenshot to a reference image library. And then once I have that, then the image tracker works. So there's a lot of things going on in here and, and this is being a process of a couple of prototypes that I create. So let me show you what I have. So on on the on the UI side, it's, it's very simple. I just have a debug screen. You can see that, you know, what I was showing you in the video I just have a couple of some information about the image that I'm capturing and I did that because I wanted to make sure that the image that I was capturing was going to be supported by the image tracking implementation in Unity. So that's that and then the other thing that I have is also a capture image. So this is the one that is getting replaced by a good and the, the way that it happens is as soon as I capture I'm replacing the text that it has with the good. I don't want to do that long term but that's what's happening right now and then this is just a status of the job as soon as I try to save that image to so that we can actually capture it in real time. So there are a couple of things that I have in here as well as a reference. So if you look at the air session origin, I have, of course, I have the air session, the air session origin, just like I do in every video about AR foundation. I also have a debug.log. This one is more verbose, what you see here. And the reason for that is because I wanted to know, like I said, more information about the image. Then the job log is more, which is right here. This is more information about the state of the saving of the image to ARKit because we need to be able to send that information to ARKit so they can start, you know, it can save it to their its reference library so we can track the image. I, I use this to basically spawn a job. I spawn like a, it's a routine, a core routine that basically saves that information. I'll show you the code so you can see that. And then the current image text, this is gonna be the image that we are, the text of the of the image that we're saving. So we normally give the image a good, and this is gonna be that good. And I think this is actually incorrect. The one that I wanted to save was gonna be this one. And that's why the band was changing to a good. It's actually gonna show here. So this is gonna be the name of the image as soon as we save it. That way we don't change the capture image text. So that was a bug. And then the job state is just like I said before. This is the, the state of saving the image to ARKit. And then I just have a capture image button that basically when you press it, it saves the image, it saves the image to the disk. All right, so the next thing that I want to show you is some of the code implementation. So we're going to go back into the AR session origin and then double click on the on my script, which is also another version of track image info runtime. I have multiple versions. You can see I have a track image info multiple. So make sure that you watch the previous videos on image tracking. That way you know what each of them are for. This one is going to be for capturing an image and then also saving an image to the as a reference library. So let me just show you some of the implementation. I want you to ignore this because this is something that I'm going to be working on on the next video. I wanted to basically determine when to put a flat object versus an object that was sitting upward 
on the image that was recognized. So I just started working on that. So you can just ignore it for now. And in fact, I'm going to, let me go ahead and change some of these because otherwise this is not gonna work with the, with the version that I have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say game object and then this is going to be the game object that I'm going to be using. So this is gonna be, let's just call it prefab. We can just say, or place object, I think it's fine. This is what I call it before. And then what we'll do here, that way you don't have these other code in here. And I can explain it to you. That's okay, let's just delete this. We don't need the randomizer. I think that's everything that I that I changed. Yeah. Okay, so we're starting, we're starting clean. So again, the, the class is this class. Make sure that you, you look at it if you happen to look in Patreon for the code. And then so these are all the properties that I show you that are getting exposed. So if you watched the previous video, I kind of walk you through, well, not kind of, I actually walk you through doing this, creating an instance of AR Track Image Manager. So I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm also creating a runtime library based on the reference library that I'm passing in through the inspector. Then I'm telling the system how many moving images I want to have at the same time. And I'm also telling the system what the, the game object is going to be. So if you look at the video, I was placing Albert Einstein. So that it's a game object that is coming from the reference in the inspector. So I'm telling the tracker what object I'm going to be placing. If you want to place different objects, make sure you watch uh, my previous video on, on placing multiple objects. And it's actually going to be, I believe it's this one right here that I, that I did it on. And let me check. That doesn't seem like the one where I did it. Multiple, okay, yeah. Make sure you look at the track image info multiple manager because that one has a dictionary and it handles having multiple prefabs attached to, to different images. So I didn't implement that. I just have one, one prefab in here. I also, by default, I, I checked the, I set the track image manager to enable. And I also, and the reason why I did this is because if you don't set the, if, you, if you're creating a runtime image library, it's going to complain if the track image manager, it's not, is actually, if it doesn't have one at the very beginning. So I just re-enable it. And then I add uh, an event to the on track image, images change that the track image manager executes as soon as it finds an image. And if you look at that method, that's going to be the method that I have right here. And this is a one that knows where to, you know, when to actually change the, the image text that is going to show in the UI and also where, when to change the, the, the rotation of the object that we're placing on the, on the image. So you can see track image, the transform, and I'm basically rotating the object up. So that's what does that. And then let's see. Now the the other part that I that I wanted to show you was the tra the show tracker info. I show you in the GUI that I had some information that I was using for debugging purposes. So this is what I do for that. I just get you know as soon as the mutable runtime reference library gets gets created, I get the the image and make sure that the texture is supported of the image that I'm saving. So I'm just showing some information for the tracker, and then the one that is basically uh, about this video is, is is this one. This is doing a lot of the work. And, and you're going to laugh because this is actually just, you know, it's, what is it, like six lines of code, five lines of code. And and this is what it's capturing the image. So I'm using some of the new implementation that Unity has in 2019, that too. So to capture an image, I'm saying, okay, wait for the end of the frame. So I'm doing a, a enumerator. I changed the job log to make sure that we can tell the user that we're capturing an image. And then I call this cool method that captures a screenshot as a texture. I get a texture back. As soon as I get a texture back, I call my same code routine that I had in the previous video. This is the one that does most of the work. This is the one that is saving an image to, to ARKit and telling ARKit that I have a new image that I want to track. So this is what's doing most of that. I'm basically just creating a good, a second good. That is one of the requirements for the extra reference image. I'm passing in those parameters. I'm telling it the size. I'm also passing in a new GUI for the image name and also the texture that I capture by doing a screen capture. And then once I have that information, I basically convert the track image manager or reference library to a mutable because if you don't convert it to a mutable, and that means that you won't be able to change it in runtime. So it's already mutable because ARKit in this case supports mutable runtime reference library. So if you're doing this in AR core and AR core doesn't support it or your device doesn't support it, you, you need to check the subsystem just to make sure that 
your device supports you know doing the mutable runtime reference images otherwise this is not going to work so because i'm using ar kit and i'm using an ios xxr this is supported so i know that this is going to work and then basically i just wait for i schedule a job passing the texture that i want to schedule to be added for ar kit and then i just wait for that job to be completed once it's completed i basically get out of the loop otherwise it's a job running and if for whatever reason I get an exception, I'm basically just catching catching the exceptions because I had some issues with with some errors. So I'm just basically catching it. You can remove that if you want to implement something like this in your own code. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you have any questions about what I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you much for watching today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing and great resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. I recently posted pictures about my, my studio, some of my setup, and I also post information about the source code that I'm making available for the community in, in actually early access. Thank you very much, guys.